pleasant hello everyone and welcome again to South Atlantic Wrestling. I'm Ted Webb and I'm here to tell you when you see the seal of the North American Wrestling Association, you are assured of the finest in professional wrestling. My partner tonight at ringside, Gene Ligon. And Gene, what a card we have for the folks tonight. A tremendous amount of wrestlers right here. We've got some newcomers coming here. Uh, Mr. What was the man's name? Luther D. will be making his, uh, his debut today and I hear an awful lot of good things about this guy. Ranger Ross, a true American hero, a man that fought in Grenada, a man that fought in the rescue mission in Iran, a man who patrolled the jungles of San Salvador. We'll be seeing Curtis Thompson, who's an outstanding professional wrestler. I tell you, we've got a fantastic, fantastic card for the folks at home tonight. I can't wait to see it all. It's going to be some newcomers here, some stars of tomorrow, and some stars of the day. And of course, we know professional wrestling in the... Hold on just a minute. Let me bump in on you if you can. You know, Ted, you've had a lot of people out here doing color commentary. I know you had Steamboat out here and several people doing it, and you've never asked me to do it, and I'm kind of puzzled about that because you know I do have some experience at that, don't you? Well, champ, all I can tell you is the way you've been running down Paul Jones for being a mere color commentator and then becoming a manager and then finally a wrestler again. I just thought that that was below you to do color, and frankly, that's why we never invited you to come out here. That's not the way. Oh, look at that. I'm right. sorry. This is... I got, I got I'm sorry. I'm your other I don't understand this. Listen, the promotion asked me to be out here. I'm out here because I've been asked. I don't like you coming out here, Fuller. If you want to get out here and be a promoter, you better get out here and you talk to the man in charge if you want to be color comedy. You don't come out here and make a fool out of me. You know that right now, Buster. Let me go right now. Tell me get those cleaned I am up right sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm truly sorry about what happened. And I can't help but uh, would wonder what your motivation was. Well, that gets too bad. You're going to need a color commentator now. I guess I'm Johnny on the spot. Hey, now, Ted. Well, let's turn it over to our ring announcer from Gorilla Radio in Charlotte, Kilgo. From Atworth, Georgia, weighing in at 238 pounds, Ranger Ross. tremendous man in the ring right now in the form of Ranger Ross, a guy that uh, I'll tell you, especially at a time right now when America is on the verge of war in the Middle East, you take a look at a guy like Ranger Ross and you know that there are thousands more like him right now in that desert in Saudi Arabia that are sweating it out to protect us and our interest in the region. Bubba Kirk will be his opponent today and I can tell you right now, Bubba's got his work cut out for him because Ranger Ross is truly an outstanding talent. Well, you know, Ranger Ross does all right, but you know, I, I, I got to tell you, Ted. He's not my type of wrestler. Right off the front there, you know, you see him, he's using the tights right off the front, it looked like to me. Well, uh, I certainly wouldn't have him in my stud stable, I don't believe. I can tell you right now that this man would be a tremendous addition to anybody's stable, to anybody's team, a great competitor and a man that has proven himself. He was an all-army wrestler, Greco-Roman, undefeated, a master of the martial arts, and certainly does a great job of mixing the blend of professional wrestling, Greco-Roman, and the, the martial arts to make himself a fierce competitor. Bubba Kirk's got his hands full, Chad. Yeah, he does. He does. It. That's easy to see right there. But I thought uh, Ruff was losing, using uh, some outside leverage on him there. Uh, well, obviously, you're, you're looking at a different uh, at a different monitor than, 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 than myself because at the monitor I was looking at, it appeared to be completely scientific, the maneuvers he was employing. Well, that may be the case. You know, and that's probably one of the good things about me being out here. I can kind of keep a handle on this and really help you out in this particular program. Here. Uh, I'm glad to be here with you, and I'm sorry about the incident that took place earlier. Yes, and so am I, sir. So am I. Ted Webb, along with the NAWA heavyweight champion Robert Fuller, ringside, Bubba Kirk in there against Ranger Ross. Side headlock from Bubba Kirk. Ranger Ross, a tremendous athlete, a tremendous patriot, a true American hero. Off the ropes goes Bubba Kirk. Cuts in the chin with a flying drop kick. Champ, that's a textbook drop kick. Snap there, take down, and the tide is starting to turn. Fine drop kick. I'm going to give that to Ross. Not a 
him up for a full body slam, hooking the leg, but Kirk Powers out. The referee for this event, Byron Richard, one of the best in the North American Wrestling Association. Well, again, I think I'd have to disagree with you there. He's refereed several of my matches, even a couple of title matches, and he's like a lot of these uh, referees around Carolina. I have my differences with some of them. They don't referee to the Tennessee rules the way I like it refereed, and Tennessee rules are different. They don't abide by my rules over here in Carolina, and then... And, uh, I'm not very happy with that. Well, sir, I can tell you that knowing the rules of uh, the North American Wrestling Association, this man applies those rules and enforces them to a T. In fact, uh, uh, at a recent report that was released from our commissioner, it showed that he was the most effective referee in, uh, in the alliance because this is a guy that took the less guff. Yeah, well, again, I, I'm not sure I could agree with your commissioners or agree with, with you on that. Major Ross with a fine reversal. Catches Bubba Kirk. Bubba Kirk on the ropes right now. And I'll tell you what, this could be the beginning of the end, champ. Elbow to the back of the head. Ranger Ross. That, that appeared to me to be an illegal elbow. Well, also. sir, maybe the Tennessee rules are a little different. Was that a, a legal maneuver on well, the part of Bubba Kirk? Stomped him with the flat of the foot. That's totally legal. And hit him with a forearm across the back. There was no fish fuse. This Bubba Kirk here, he's, he's impressive me somewhat. Well, he's a strong man. Just lifted him up for a full body slam. But not impressive enough. Going to the well once too often. Ranger Ross moving, and Bubba Kirk hit that funny ball right into the ring. Ross catching him in the midsection as he came in, firing away at the chin. And boom! Bubba that's, Kirk. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. I've wrestled this Ranger Ross before, and that's the reason I don't put my title up to him. That's an illegal maneuver right there. Now, look, he's using karate. That, you see that from Ricky Steamboat. You see that from several of the wrestlers in this area. That's not legal. Tennessee. Well, I think he just turned on the on button on Ranger Ross and Bubba Kirk. Bubba Kirk may be seeing a little more than he wants to see from the Ranger. Nice leapfrog. There, the you, go. there you go, a karate kick. And Tennessee be disqualified right now. Instead, he's a winner. The winner of your match, Ranger Ross. Ranger Ross with a savant kick and cover, and he is the winner. And Robert Fuller, let's take a look at this one on instant replay on our slow motion camera. And you describe the action as you see it. Well, what I see here right now is he's taking him off the ropes. It's all very fair and legal at this point. It's a nice reversal. Ross over with a nice leapfrog. It's a great place for a drop kick, but instead he uses illegal karate maneuver right there and gives him a kick. And uh, like I say, in Nashville right there, they just stop the match, raise Bubba's hand, and that'd be the end of it. And there it is. As he wraps him up for the victory, and South Atlantic Wrestling will continue after the situation. And with us right now is the executive director of People Against Drugs and AIDS Infection, Mr. Richard Beelan, along with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, and War Eagle, Chris Chavis. How about a nice hand for him? Richard, you have done a fantastic job. Tell us about Project Graduation. What we're trying to do uh, with People Against Drugs and AIDS and Infections Incorporated, and of course, in association with the uh, South Atlantic Wrestling uh, Group, is to, of course, uh, educate the high-risk and indigent youth, and of course, all youth, as far as drugs and AIDS infections. Uh, this is a problem uh, that is becoming a devastating crisis across the country, South Carolina, North Carolina, the large cities, the small cities. The problems has left the small city, the large cities, and of course has gone into the smaller cities and the rural areas. And of course that's what we're doing here tonight at the Greenwood Civic Center Auditorium. You know, lovely town, uh, uh, fantastic people, and of course we're here tonight to give support, you know, to that uh, project graduation, of course, which includes uh, education on uh, drugs and AIDS infections. Uh, we will be having a similar program uh, and Florence, South Carolina at West Florence High School Gym on September 15th in association with the South Atlantic Wrestling Group. And of course there, uh, we're doing the same thing there that you're doing here. We appreciate the wrestlers, uh, particularly uh, Chris Chavis, War Eagle, and of course a Ricky Steamboat. Uh, you can look at these gentlemen and tell from the size of them that they are drug free. And to all of the youth watching, I want to say, if you want a body like this, then be drug free. Richard, you know, so many times young children are disappointed when they read of a football player or a baseball player that has been involved in drugs, and they need positive role models, and you couldn't have picked more positive role models than the two that we have up here with us today. I agree with you strongly. Uh, War Eagle and, of course, Ricky Steamboat, who seems as though has been around forever, is the perfect role models as far as uh, professional 
heavyweight dynamics incredibly athletes and I just want to I'm trying to understand how these guys has been around so long I think they're three times my age and they look ten times younger than I do <laughs> can you talk with a knife in your back <laughs> well you know something ladies and gentlemen you know probably one of the easiest words to to spell in our American vocabulary is probably one of the hardest words for our young children of today to say and that is to say no to drugs and I also agree with Richard here and Mr. Beelan that we've got to educate our children. We've got to get set forth our educational system to help teach our young kids today about AIDS, about saying no to drugs. But another thing that I must believe in because I have a little three-year-old myself, that I also believe that it starts in the home. And it's just as much responsibility for our parents here sitting and also viewing to educate their children, to teach their children from the very first day that they can start to understand our American English language, to educate them to say no to drugs, and also be widely aware of the problem with AIDS. Thank you, Ricky. War Eagle, I know that you're a staunch anti-drug campaigner. You give speeches at high schools and schools throughout the country. Give us a couple of words. Well, the best thing I can say is the South Atlantic Wrestling is very, very happy to work with the people against drugs and aid infections and Mr. Beelan. The biggest thing is for all you young children out there, Ricky couldn't have said it any better. Just make sure when someone approaches you, drugs, alcohol, just make sure that you say no. It's a downfall. It's leading you to nowhere. All the teenagers in high school, school, all this pep, the money, the cars, you see all those things, don't go for it. Work, work, there's no substitute for hard work. Remember your goals, remember the goals that you set for yourself, follow those goals, and that will take you where you want to go, to the stars. And you know, parents, right. yeah. Yeah. Richard, parents can play an integral part by showing a lot of concern for their children, getting them involved in athletic activities such as amateur wrestling. You get them on the mats, you're going to keep them off the streets, you keep them off the streets, you've saved yourself a youngster. This is true. Uh, of course, I want to uh, insert here that uh, to all the youth listening, Professor E, of course, is a drug education rapper. He is the drug education rapper of the year. Professor E has a Cadillac. Professor E also has a limo. Professor E is drug free so that tells you that you do not have to use drugs or have drugs or sell drugs to get to the top professor e has made it to the top thank you very much richard Beeling, the executive director of people against drugs and aids infection let's turn it over to our ring announcer kilgo <laughs> Next match from Columbia, South Carolina, weighing in at 270 pounds, Luther D. Luther D. Making his debut on South Atlantic Pro Wrestling this afternoon. His opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 231 pounds, Greg Brown. Oh, and I can tell you that Greg Brown is a tough competitor. We have seen him in action before. This is the first chance we've had a chance to uh, to get a look at Luther D. But, boy, I'll tell you, the, the uh, bio that comes with Luther D. Champ is a rather impressive one. Well, you know, I'm scouting this Luther D. It's for sure I'm going to be watching him very closely because, as you know, the state was in full force. We've got our nasty boys. We've got Maniac Matt and myself, and we're looking for another man. And Luther D., he might be our man. I'd like to see him win this one. You are actually looking at Luther D as a possible member of the stable? That's exactly right. That, uh, you know, I've heard about this boy. I've heard that he's got great credentials, moves around good. You know, I like to find people I can make some changes in. Here's a man right here that, that needs a few changes in his makeup. That right there's one of them right there. He moved in a little slow. I need to put a little speed on him. I need to make him more aggressive. If he was in my stable, I, I certainly would. Well, I tell you, there's no doubt as to Greg Brown's aggressiveness, but I don't think we've seen the best of Luther D yet. Luther D is a fella that I am told is a tough man and a big man and quick, very quick for his size. Maybe too much of a Mr. Nice Guy. Maybe a little bit too much of a Mr. Nice Guy. You gotta have that attitude right. You gotta go in there and you gotta go for it. You gotta take those risks. You, you, you gotta break a few rules sometimes. You know what I'm talking about, Ted? Well, that's not the opinion of Ronnie Hanna. He's the third man in the ring, the referee for this match. Greg Brown unloading right now. <laughs> 
on Luther D, who appears to be able to take a pretty good shot and fire back with a darn good shot. Well, I've heard you up here talking a little earlier with uh, uh, Ricky Steamboat and uh, this, this Indian Chavez about drugs. In Tennessee, we got a way of handling that. I'd take my belt off and take it to them kids pretty good, and I'd take it to their moms and daddies, too, if they needed it. That's the way we handle it, where I came from. Well, I don't know if that is scientifically proven to be the best way, but if it works for you, whatever it takes to get them <laughs> off of sure drugs. <laughs> This boy's raw bone strength. You see right there, he just hauled the man up right out of the middle, threw him right down. Luther D, that's one thing he won the match. I'm going to be looking at this boy. I'm going to be talking to him. Well, that concerns me, Chad, but the winner of the match right now is Luther D, and Greg Brown landed square on his shoulder. Landed square on his shoulder there. And I can tell you right now that uh, he is uh, not feeling well right now. We can see it on replay. Why don't you describe what happened? We see Luther right here is in a position where he just hosses the man up. He didn't really have a lot going for him, but he just picked him up with brute strength, dropped him right down, stunned him pretty good with the shot that he took. It's a little awkward. And then took the ball on him with a three count. I like this boy, Luther D, and I'm going to certainly be talking with him, Ted. Well, we are fortunate right now to have with us. Attention all high school band and athletic booster clubs, civic groups, police and fire departments. Put the power of America's number one fundraiser, professional wrestling, and this television station to work for you. That's right. You can raise funds for your group or organization by bringing the stars of South Atlantic Wrestling to your hometown. For more info, call area code 704-362-2994 or send a self-addressed stamped envelope to South Atlantic Wrestling, P.O. Box 221-269, Charlotte, 28222. Stay tuned for more info on South Atlantic Wrestling coming to your area. to the ring by his manager, his confidant, his friend, Mr. Paul Jones. Your referee for this event is Byron Richard. With me at ringside is the champion of the North American Wrestling Association, Mr. Robert Fuller, a surprise color commentator. <laughs> Maybe you'll change your mind about uh, Paul Jones and his role as a common color commentator. Well, I'm not so sure about it. You know, I, I feel like I'm really doing a great job out here with you. You know, this is a pretty easy job to do, Ted. Well, sir, it, it, uh, it depends. Uh, I must admit you're doing a, a, an admirable job this evening, uh, though I disagree with uh, some of the information that you're supplying our, our viewers. Well, it's, it's, it's for certain. If you watch the monitor a little closer. What a takedown by Torelli. Uh, there could have been in his shoelaces there a little bit. You oh, know? come on now, Chad. Keeping my eye out for him to be able to get into his shoelaces there. It looked like he might have been in there. You know, one of the things that has to be known about Vince Torelli was that he was an outstanding athlete in college. In fact, was invited to attend the San Diego Charger preseason camp. They wanted him to play linebacker for him, and he uh, passed it up for his first slot, which is professional wrestling. But this man has made it to the finals of the National Batman competition, so he can go downtown, Chuck. Well, that's, that's true. You know, that, that, that's probably the most admirable thing he's done as far as athletics goes. I don't have much respect for these amateur wrestlers a whole lot because, uh, you know, I'm in a submission game. As far as I'm concerned, you're going to get a man down to hurt him. He'll quit. Well, Torelli, you will find, will work over one specific part of the body, and there he goes again for the left foot of Butch Malone, much to the delight of the crowd, I might say. Great takedown. Or a cheap shot. Either way you want to call it. I'm not too impressed with this Torelli. Well, let's, let's take a look at the strength of Torelli. Wow! Wow! He just picked up a man that is a good-sized man and lifted him up over his head just like a, a bag of potatoes, a sack of potatoes. And once again, going to work on that left leg. I don't think there's any doubt about it, Teddy. He's got a lot of upper body strength there, but in the same token, he doesn't have too much above that upper body. Those brains don't work too good because we offered this gentleman a contract. I mean that anybody with any sense at all wouldn't have been able to turn down, and he's taking Paul Jones' advice. 
Well, seeing, That's cost him in the end. seeing the contract myself, I have to admit that that was a rather hefty sum, one that compares with any contract I have seen recently signed by any baseball or football player. But I have to respect the man's principles for saying no, I'm not going to turn my back on my friend. You have to respect and admire a guy who can do that. I don't that. understand that at all, Ted. You're out here. You're supposed to be giving people a straight scoop on this thing. Here's a guy who came down a contract of a lifetime. You should be saying you don't understand how he can do that. Sometimes you and I, you're right, we don't agree. And you know, when I, I, when I take over this that. company and my stud stable starts to rain with a little more power, you might have a problem with this job of yours. You better start seeing things a little bit my way, you know. Half Boston Crab, the referee calling for the break as Butch Malone had found his way to the ropes. But once again, Torelli hooks that leg. And once again, they have to break because they're in the ropes. You're watching the best in professional wrestling. This is South Atlantic Wrestling. With me at ringside, Robert Fuller, the North American Wrestling Association heavyweight champion. <laughs> I like it when you say that, Ted. You really put enthusiasm in there. I like that. Well, I must be fair and impressive. I think he had his tights in the back when he took him over. Very dangerous maneuver. He got leverage with the tights. It's Champ, very clear to Champ, see. Champ, I could not see it, and I'm watching the same match that you're watching. I didn't see him grab the tights. I would bet you anything that Paul Jones gave him that maneuver, that he told him when you get your man up high in the air like that, just take hold of a handful of tights and get your leverage with the tights. I'm no doubt. No doubt that Paul gave him the maneuver, but I have to dispute the fact that it was an illegal one. A great knee lift. We felt that up here. We didn't just see it. We felt that up here. And Butch Malone right now has to be looking for a gas station. Again, look at him. He's past the side of the tank. No, it's very clear. You couldn't say there he didn't have hold of the man. Perfectly tank. legal. How else do you deliver a souffle like there you just did? again, we disagree. In Nashville, that would not have been legal at all. He'd be disqualified if he were oh. A reverse slam. And Butch Malone right now, much the worse for wear. The tide certainly flowing in Vince Torelli's favor. Appears to me that uh, Torelli is just trying to torture the man right here. He's got him down. He's giving the slash maneuvers. Now he's knocked him. It's, it's, it's clear that he's unconscious. He gets back to his feet. He's not a conscious man. He knew that he hit the button square on the nose with that drop kick. That's textbook, champ. That's the way they teach it. That's the way he executed it. A great hip by takedown. Covered the man and beat him after the first maneuver. That right here, it's, it's clear. Paul Jones again has had an act in this thing because he's told him torture this man. Belly to belly. This one it is all over. And a hand in the tank. The very fair to see. Has a hand in the tank. Nobody watched this one. That's the replay. This one belongs to Vince Torelli. A great belly to belly to play. Let's take a look at that on our slow motion instant replay. And you tell me if he was holding on to the tights. Let's look at it right there, champ. No there. You see those hands? No tights. A great maneuver. And I'll have to give that to you. I watched that very closely. You know, I think I was right on all of the other points that I made, but he clearly made a nice uh, belly to belly suplex there taking the match. Ted Webb along with Robert Fuller and ringside. Don't go away. There's a lot of exciting action coming up on South Atlantic Wrestling. The Maniac, Matt Bourne, up next. Cooper's going to be in the ring with your buddy right now. His opponent from Dallas, Texas, weighing in at 245 pounds, the maniac, Matt Bourne. Well, there's no telling, no telling what could happen here now. I can, I can assure you that Ronnie Hanna has his hands full. Now listen at this crowd screen from Matt. They love the stable and they love maniac Matt Bourne. Well, I'm not quite so sure, Chant, that the cheers were for Matt Bourne. Those sounded like uh, well-placed bulls. Man, that's... That's not necessary. What he was doing, he gave him the opportunity to wake him up there. He fired the boy up a little bit. It's the only chance this gentleman's got against Matt Bourne is get fired up and take the match to Matt. Otherwise, Matt lead him alive. Was that legal in Tennessee, Robert Fuller? Yes, in Tennessee, uh, Matt would have gotten away with that, I'm sure. Collar and elbow, each man testing each other for leverage and balance into the ropes. And firing away. Cooper returning the favor. Eric Cooper with a side headlock on the maniac, Matt Bourne. Well, that's one thing you don't want to do is Cooper's not too smart to figure out. You don't want to go slapping Matt around early in the match because Matt goes off on him, and that's the end of it, Ted. Excellent maneuver there, I have to.
like to say from Matt Bourne, who, no matter what we say about him, is an excellent wrestler. Well, he's, you know, he's a young man, 25 years old. He, you know, he's one of the hottest stars to ever come out of Texas. He's, he's uh, as far as amateur goes, sports, he's won it all. Matt's been there, boy. He's, and he, he's the type of guy that takes the match to you. He can torture you. He can hurt you. He scared a lot of guys from out of wanting to win a match. Frankly, Robert, I understand he's a great athlete. What I have a problem with is the tactics. An athlete of his caliber shouldn't resort to the tactics that he does. Well, he likes it rough. You know, some guys like to get in there and they like to mix it up and they like it rough. Now, right here, he's trying to teach this young man a lesson. Here's a young man, obviously, not ready for the ring. He's a little bit heavy. He's out of weight. His, his amateur background just probably doesn't touch mats with a 10-foot pole. Now you got Matt out there teaching this young man a lesson. Well, what, he's, what he's doing right now, champ, is humiliating Eric Cooper. And, uh, and, and frankly, I think that that's despicable. You know, and I was real proud of that. Now, you figure you come to Carolina and they're going to allow these judo chops and karate. Now, there's Matt right there. He gave this young man a judo chop. Did you hear that thing pop? There's another one. There's a legal judo chop right there. Well, it looked more like a slap to the face, which I think is despicable. It's humiliation at its best. See, he's giving him a chance right now. He's telling him, he's giving him a chance. He's saying, come on, young man, get up and wrestle me. A lot of guys would take advantage of him while he's down, but Matt, trying yeah. to give him the opportunity. Are you missing, are you missing the boots to the to the kidneys and the boot to the back of the head? Is that giving a guy a chance to get Well, I, I, I didn't observe any boots to the kidneys or the back of the head. I just saw him trying to help the young man up. With help like that, you certainly don't need enemies. See, now the man's got himself twisted in the ropes, and again, Matt's trying to free him from the ropes. I love this, Matt. I'm glad to have him in the stable. He's a true friend. Well, they say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and I guess action in the ring likewise. <laughs> Maniac Matt Bourne completely ignoring the instructions of Montana. He got him free from the ropes, you know. Now, there was a man tied up in the ropes. He's obviously in a great deal of danger, and Matt freed him from the ropes. That's true sportsmanship. I guess he was giving him an eye exam there while he was down on the ground as well. Double chicken wing souffle. He's giving him a little wrestling lesson right here. Wow. <laughs> wow. I have to admit one thing, Mr. Fuller. He is a powerful individual. Now, now, now what? Explain that to me. A chance to further the young man's career just a little bit right there. You know, that would have been a short match that went down a small time. Instead, he gave this young man a chance to be somebody. He a has a chance? chance now to get up and take the match to Matt, change this thing around, and make a name for himself. He gave him a chance to suffer permanent injury right now. Eric Cooper is fit to be pinned. Depends on how you see it. Depends on how you see it, Ted. He is hurting right now. Eric Cooper could have been pinned. Well, I'll tell you what, Matt is going to get a little deterred with this young man in a minute. He's, he's going to get mad at him, and when he does, then, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to be to blame for what happened. Look at this. Look at this. Standing on the man's get up and fight. He wants him to fight back. The young man needs to get himself in shape. He's a little heavy around the waist right there. It's obvious he's got a bad attitude about things. Matt's giving him a little attitude adjustment. That's what you want to do, son. You want to fight back a little so you can get that man. That's always good for a little excitement, Ted. Well, I, I, can, I can say one thing, that he is definitely giving Matt Bourne a taste of his own medicine right now. It's a variation of the python, the cobra. He applies it so well, too. This cuts off the flow of blood to the carotid artery. You know, this is like a sleeper. The only difference in this and your other sleeper is this supplies a lot more pain than Matt enjoys that. Well, I'll tell you right now that Eric King is in another kingdom right now, my friend. Eric Cooper is in another kingdom. He's this match there. is all over. And at this particular moment, he should definitely, he should definitely be waking the man up because the Lord no, we're not. We are not going to have another replay on this one. I'll so tell you right now that, that this is uncalled for. And there you see the maniac sing signaling to, to his friend, Robert Fuller, and letting Robert Fuller know that uh, this one's for you, babe. This is the North American Wrestling Association. We bring you the finest in professional wrestling week in and week out. And I can tell you right now that uh, we'll be back for more after these messages. Ladies and gentlemen, now making his way to the ring from Newland, North Carolina, weighing in at 252 pounds, Curtis Thompson. And you can look at the 
build on Curtis Thompson right now, a fantastic athlete. Yeah, that's true. You know, he's a guy I'm watching very closely, the, the stable material also. Well, if you could land this guy, I have to admit, you'd have one heck of an athlete in your corner. <laughs> I like that. This is from Columbus, Georgia, weighing in at 245 pounds, Mike Servich. Mike Servich, a tremendous competitor. We've seen him in action many times. He and Curtis Thompson will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe on this one, and I can assure you we're going to be in for a great match. I believe you, you got two muscle-up guys. Look like they're in fantastic condition right here. You could see it's pretty good action out of these two fellas. Well, you know, they say that Curtis Thompson is in love, champ. He's in love with himself. Well, uh, from what I've seen of him, he has pretty good reason to be proud of himself. He's a man who wins most of his matches. And, uh, you can tell he trains. He's in, like I said, terrific condition. He, I think he has reason. Well, his narcissistic attitude has certainly contributed to his success. i got to tell you that. He, he believes in himself. And uh, I guess you have to if you're going to be a winner. You're an obvious uh, exponent of that, being the North American Wrestling Association heavyweight champion. Well, that's, that's, that's true. you you got to believe in yourself. You see the young man right there had him in the corner instead of breaking the hole and backing off like he did. He's going to pause for time or what have you. And that kind of perturbed uh, Curtis there a little bit. And he's unhappy about it. Well, the referee Byron Richard called for the break. And, of course, Curtis taking the court shortcut. He is a good wrestler, and there was a fantastic maneuver. Hey, you know, Ted, I didn't see any shortcut there. Boy, you know, he took the arm and very quickly turned it. I like that boy when he says, can't touch this, don't yeah, you, Ted? Yeah, I like that, too, but I think you ought to pay attention to Servic because I tell you, we have seen, we have seen guys that were flaunting their wares and found themselves in trouble, and I recall Colt Steele being beaten by Spike of the Bulldogs in 13 seconds of our North American Heavyweight uh, Championship Tournament, all because he wasn't paying attention to what was happening in the ring. Uh, you recall some of the funniest things. I don't remember that happening. That's funny you'd say that. I never saw that. Thompson firing away on the break, square in the chin of serving, not even responding to the warnings by the official. Oh, nice move. Did you see that? Yes, that I was saw a terrific it. move. Of course, he, you know, I'm sure he didn't realize he had hold of the gentleman's hair. Uh, that he, I'm sure he didn't want to take leverage with no, the hair like no, that. Of course he meant not. to take hold of his head, and at the same token, he got hold of his hair. Just I'm got sure carried away. If he was up here right now, he'd probably give you an apology for that, Ted. I have just been handed a note here. I have just been handed a note here that you have purchased that <laughs> yes. on the on, on South Atlantic Wrestling. You have purchased time. Well, I guess you realize now it's been finalized. That, uh, in the future, and certainly starting next week, you will see a special part of your program, which will be called the Stud Stable. Oh, I'll be handling that myself. Please. <laughs> you know, I told the boys when we all formed our company, the Stud Stable, we were going to be making some moves on this company. We were, we, we really had designs on taking over the whole company. We have a better way of doing things, I think. You know, having me out here as commentator, you should realize by now. Sunset flip attempt. A great sunset flip attempt that did not work, and that is a, a, a tribute to the power of Curtis Thompson's legs. They win here. Service firing away to that bread basket. Trying to wear him down into the turnbuckles. Whoa! Walking right into that big foot. And Sarovic is stunned. I think he took the, uh, the breath out of him pretty good. He got him with a kick right there near well, the solar plex. I think he took it out of him. I know he took it out of him with that clothesline. No I doubt about it. Right. No doubt about it. One, two, but Sarovic rolls. Got a two-counted near pin. I tell you what, this Curtis Thompson is a powerful individual. Powerful well, individual. Teddy's a great sportsman, too. As you uh, see right there, he's he's using sportsmanship to his advantage there. And he's he's a great sportsman. I happen to know him personally. I, you know, I haven't known him long, but since getting to know him, he's a fine fella, a great sportsman. Well, he's working on that shoulder right now, and we know what that leads to. And he is risking serious damage to the bursal sack right now. Well, those of you that have been in athlete, athletics for a while know how painful that can be. Yeah, it can be very painful. You know, that's part of being in this business. If you want to be a professional wrestler, you better get ready to pay your dues. You better get yourself in shape, or you're going to get hurt first match out. There's, there's, no, need. there's no need for that. Ramming, ramming that shoulder into the steel casing of the ring, and Surovich is hurt. Surovich is hurt right now, and I'm not so sure that Byron Richards shouldn't put this match to an end right now. 
Right he's now. obviously done something to Curtis there that's got him mad, and Curtis is trying to take over on him a little bit. Show him a lesson here. Well, you can see Surovich. Surovich swinging wildly there, obviously in pain, favoring that shoulder. And now Curtis has him down to the ground, and he's working on that shoulder, working on that shoulder. And he does, he does, he does submit. This match belongs to Curtis Thompson, the U.S. male. Curtis Thompson victorious over Mike Surovich. And I right now am concerned about Surovich's shoulder. Well, don't worry, don't worry. You know, if he's hurt, we'll find a new one. There's always another opponent out there. Let's give it to Curtis Thompson. That's your man right there. The winner of this match is Curtis Thompson. And don't go away because coming up next, the Ameri American Bulldogs will be taking on Colt Steele and Tommy Landell on South Atlantic Wrestling. The next event, tag team action from Mannington, New Jersey, with a combined weight of 486 pounds, Spike and Rex, the American Bulldogs. Now you see the crowd respond to the American Bulldogs, and this uh, obviously a tune-up match for them. They'll be taking on a couple of Californians, East meets West. taking on New Jersey here. You know, you were talking about being happy that Colt Steele has turned his back on his Carolina roots. I can tell you right now that this guy does not fit in at Venice Beach, uh, champ. I'm sorry. I have to disagree with you. I don't know how you could possibly say that, champ. I can't even disagree because here's a man right here who looks like to me he's born on the surfboard. I mean, take a good look at him. I have taken a good look at him, and, and that's what I base my opinion on. i got to tell you, though, and, and, and do credit to this guy, an outstanding football player during his college career, and you could look at him when he wrestles. Check out those eyes. I always refer to those eyes as Charles Manson eyes, but the guy is an intense competitor, and uh, being a former North Carolina powerlifting champion and now ranked among the world's best, I mean, you know that this guy packs a wallet. Well, that's for sure. And he's against two guys in there for sure that'll break the rules anytime they get a chance to. You got the Bulldogs in there. I happen to know because the Nasty Boys are great friends of mine, Nobs and Sacks, two of the greatest guys you'd ever want to meet in your life. I'll tell you, they're genes of the guys, and, and uh, they've told me some things about these Bulldogs it's hard to believe, and I'm going to be watching very closely these guys because uh, I happen to know from what I've been told they'll break any rule in the game. Well, they're a rough, tough deucing, but uh, they have not done anything that has not been done to them. And if you're basing this on the word of Nobs and Sags, sir, I'd say check the credibility of your witnesses. Hey, you think I don't know the credibility? Those are fine guys, and they're good friends of mine, and I appreciate it if you wouldn't sit here and talk bad about it. Colt Steele powering that knee into the back of the neck of Spike of the American Bulldogs. Their goal, the North American Wrestling Association Tag Team title belts. You know, this is bad, right? They got these children around the ring right now barking like a bunch of dogs. Here's two guys going, come in the ring, going whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, that's kind of ignorant. Where I come from, I got an old, old hound dog called Bud, and I beat him up when he goes to barking too much. I was to wrestle these two boys. They wouldn't fare too well with me. You know, I was wondering if the American Humane Society has ever paid a visit to you. Well, I'll tell you what, if they do, I'll take my belt off to them, just like I was talking about earlier. Well, they have just cleared out the ring. The Bulldogs, and you're right, the fans at ringside are barking. Yeah, that's exactly right. They got these children out here thinking they're a bunch of dogs. This is up to me. I'd shut it up and stop it right now. Monkey rolls. You've learned those in football practice, and they were just applying those right now. And the intimidation has kept Landell and Cole Steele outside of the ring. Now, again, you know, now you got your Carolina referee in there right now. I don't figure he's doing a good job. He should have these boys one in the ring at a time. You got both of them in there doing monkey rolls back and forth. If it's me, I'd get rid of that referee. I'd bring in a guy from Nashville. I got a couple of guys in Nashville. And soon, if I can get the pull in this organization I ought to have in the first place, I'll be bringing in some Nashville referees. We'll see some better officiating. Well, 
Well, sir, in defense of Ronnie Hanna, he has done a tremendous job in his stint with South Atlantic Wrestling. Very respected among his peers. There's an elbow, and Rex right now tasting canvas. Hollywood Tommy Landau. <laughs> I'd like to hear that boy barking right now. Well, uh, Looked a little like an illegal shoulder block to me there, Tim. Is there such a thing as an illegal shoulder? Explain well, that to me. I think it is if you throw the elbow in there. Got the back of his tights there. Clearly has the back of his tights. Nice Didn't power deliver. slam. Tag has been made. Boom! The elbow square on the throat of Hollywood Tommy Landell. Clear case of double teaming. Clear case of double teaming right there, Ted. Nice snap, man. Takedown, and there is that foot right at the top of the forehead. Ted, what'd you say this referee's name is again? I'd Ronnie like to write Hanna. it down here on my list because I'm going to be reporting some of these. This is Ronnie Hanna. You might not be seen around here too long if he doesn't get control of these matches. Well, I think he's got this match under perfect control, my friend. Who dropped it? Another case of double teaming. It's clear they're double teaming out there, Ted. Sir, that was a great execution. That showed fantastic teamwork that can only be developed from time in the ring and time in the gym together. I don't agree with that at all. I think that's Ronnie Hanna in there. He should get one man out of the ring. You make a tag, get one man out. If you saw me and Matt Bourne in there as a tag team, you see the nasty boys in there. You don't see that type of double teaming. Bulldog, we do it Tennessee style. Bulldog Rex making the tag right now with Bulldog Spike. Double to play. That poor boy should be disqualification right there, Ted. The match ought to be over. I am surprised at hearing that from you, sir, after viewing you in the ring many times. I am surprised that you are calling for a disqualification for such a fine maneuver. I hope you're not going to start on me now like you've been talking about sacks and knobs. Now you're going to start on me. Well, now that you bring it up, I have to say that I have to question some of your tactics. You can double team him right in front of the referee's face, and all he says is out of the ring, young man. Boy, I'd be dusting some britches. Me and that referee would have it by now. Well, you see, that was a perfect tag. Boom. The legal man in the ring is Spike right now, Bulldog Spike, coming down with 250 pounds on his neck, and Landell is in trouble. Start to make me wonder how much these Bulldogs paid that referee. I'm starting to wonder now. Anybody double teams that much, don't even get reprimanded for it. Well, you can see that Landell and Colt Steele obviously do not have that experience of working together. Obviously a maneuver that went wrong there. Yeah, he obviously didn't hold him up there long enough for his partner to catch him good. He still took an awful bad fall from it. This match is all over. This match is all over. And the winners of this match, the American Bulldogs, Spike and Rex. Spike and Rex certainly in line for a tag title championship match with the Nasty Boys. And I can assure you that somewhere down the line, that title may very well switch. switch I just want to tell you, Robert.